magical and beast. Fit, fabulous, and frisky. I'm Beast from Brasco and Beast, and today we are going to do what's been called Pig Saver Ham. And uh, I fixed it before, and it turned out great, but I think I've gotten the recipe down even a little bit better. So this is going to be an alternative to eating ham, and it was delicious. In fact, it was so delicious, I need to make some extra ones because I kind of ate it kind of fast. 140 grams of tofu. Now I'm going to need about three-fourths cup of water, okay? Okay. Give me two spoons of this, two tablespoons of this liquid smoke. One. Two. Now, doing this in the food processor actually makes it a lot easier to do. I'm going to put a few drops of red dye in here. I'm going to use ten drops, okay? One. Two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, maybe a little more. Maybe a few more than we thought we was going to have, okay? That'd be all right. Don't tell nobody. So this is what we got so far before we get started. We've got the tofu, the water, the liquid smoke, and the red dye all together, one mixture, before we get to mixing things up. We want to run this for about 30 seconds, okay? Run it for 30 seconds. This is onion powder, so we're going to add four of this. One. Two. Three, four, right? Ba-da! We're gonna add two of these, two spoons of this, teaspoons. One, two, right? Real simple stuff, real simple stuff. Now, they said they wanted to add sugar, but you know what I like better than sugar? Oh, I want some brown sugar. Oh, 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 oh. One. Oh, by the way, and, and the brown sugar makes it heavenly, by the way. Two. Three. One fourth cups of mushroom powder. I have an eighth measurement, so I'm going to do this twice. Mushroom powder is odd. It's, I mean, excuse me, but nutritional use, yeast has been just really wonderful at just adding, you know, just a flavor of stuff, you know? MSG that goes into this. One spoon, one teaspoon of this. Then it called for uh, some salt, right? But instead of regular salt, I'm using Lowry's. You know how we feel about our Lowry. I like Lowry. Boom. Boom. Two of those. Two chicken flour. Two heaping. Just so that you know, if you if yours look like this, it's looking the way it's supposed to look, okay? And you still got the the liquid pink stuff at the bottom. Now we're going to close this all up and mix it together. Because I think we got all the ingredients that we need, I believe. I'm pretty sure. Yes. Did I put my liquid smoke in there? I did. Sure did. Okay. Let's, let's, let's hit it. Thickening up. Now we're going to add two cups of vita wheat gluten. So this is my half cup measurement. So I'm going to add four of these. Instead of kneading the dough with your hand, taking a long time, keep it in the food processor, right? Now you want to blend this for three minutes. 
Make oh, shoot. I think I overheated it. It stopped before I stopped it. Let's see. Let's get it out. Yeah, it's looking real doughy. Take your dough and cut it into two pieces. Let's flatten them out a bit. They should be pretty easy to work with. A little bit sticky, but not by much. We want that. Because now we want to add the fat to this thing, okay? No. How do we add the fat? Coconut oil. It's for room temperature. Uh, just adding it. Just putting it in here like this. Because, you know, ham has fat in it, right? So this helps to give you that fat texture when you cut into it like it's real ham. Just end it randomly, you know. You can add it to one side. I don't want to overdo it because it's, it's, it's going to be fine. Have some space in between it. Put some space between each one of them on. Each one of them. And it may seem like a whole lot, right? Well, it's... It is, but it's worth it. All right, so now, now what you're going to do is you're going to make a ham sandwich. You're going to take the top, put it over here like this here, and pinch these two together. Right? And the reason why we do this, because we don't want to add the oil earlier, because it just don't make, it don't mix right. You know, it just, it just doesn't mix right. Okay, so we got that going on like this with this ham loaf. See, now it's looking good. There we go. And it looks like it's forming really good. None of it, and actually the way we got it, we're not even losing any of the uh, any of the coconut oil in the middle of it so we've got that we've got the um, wonderful wonderful um, fatty deposits in the middle of the of the of the of the dough that's going to make it come off even better preheat your oven to 350 okay pop it in just like this Get this dough in here like that. Mm -hmm. And pinch it off on each side here. Okay. We're going to pinch it off on each side. And have your ham ready to go to put in the oven for about an hour and a half, to be quite honest. So we're ready. This is ready to go into the oven right here, just like this. Now this stack, I did actual without the machines. I just did it by hand. I kneaded it by hand. It's more rough looking. We're going to see how the difference is between those two. This one's thicker, actually. Definitely messier. I'm going to pinch both sides of these together. Just like that. I want to make sure we have enough room on both sides so that we can roll it up nicely. Yeah, there we go. Rolling it up. Yeah, we're going to roll it up. There we go. We're rolling it up. We're rolling it up. We're rolling it up. Rolling it up. Go 
rolling it up, pinching it on both sides, twist it on both sides. So if it grows or expands, it becomes a more compact meat. This one feels meatier than this one. This is by hand. This is by machine. I'm already liking the way this hand one feels even better. We'll compare the two. See, what I did was I went ahead and mixed all the wet ingredients here and mixed them separately. I think it mix is better if you take that and then in your bowl, you put all your dry ingredients together and mix all those together separately. Um, because if you put them all in your machine at one time, you might do what I did, which is to uh, blow the engine in your uh, food processor. It ain't worth all that. Just a, just, just, just a pro tip for you. This is my third one. I'm making three loaves. Three little different, three different techniques. So I'm going to use all my tofu up. Because I didn't put all the tofu in one. I put sliced in thirds and used the tofu for three different loaves. Now, we add the liquid ingredients. So that we don't have to scrape it out of the, what you call it, we... Add it in like that. See how much cleaner that is? See that? We get in there with our hands, mix it up. Oh yeah, it's looking more pink like it's supposed to on this time. This time it's looking all pink. All right, now we're down to the cooking part. So let's get a pan out. Put all three in here. and put it in our preheat oven. Our oven has been preheated for 350 since we've been putting everything together. We're gonna to put this all together right here. We're gonna put this middle rack. We're gonna let it stay in there for an hour and a half and we're gonna get the veggie stock ready for the second part of the cooking. So this is a two part cooking. The first part is baking it for one and a half hours. While the loaves are cooking in the uh, oven, we're going to prepare the veggie broth to do the second part of the cooking. Pouring the last of the veggie broth in here. We're going to bring this up to a boil and let it boil because we're about 18 minutes out from the uh, loaf being done. And all three of them are doing pretty good in there. And it's starting to smell pretty good as well. Hold it to the form. Uh, be sure you double wrap those uh, loaves so that they don't explode in the oven on you. So put plenty of uh, aluminum foil on it so that you don't have to worry about cleaning up a doughy mess. The idea is to get this broth going so that it is boiling so that when we take it out we can put it in here and then let this simmer. And don't boil your seitan or it will turn to straight dough. So you want to boil, you want to get your, your you want to get your, uh, your broth up to boil before you put it in there so that when you put it in there, so when you put your loaves in there, it'll drop it to just simmering, but that's where you want it to stay. Then after you drop it to simmering, we're gonna take it and stick it back into the 350 oven and let it stay for another hour and a half so it just simmers, okay? We want it to slowly cook, and that's gonna cook some juiciness into it, okay? Um, now, it is a two-step process, because even after, after it finishes cooking, then we're gonna let it sit in the broth overnight, and then tomorrow, we will put the glaze on top of all three of them. But tonight, we're still finishing the cooking process. Okay, so let's peel this open and see what it looks like. Unwrap it. See what we're looking at and what we're dealing with. Ooh, it's hot. 
Okay. It's a pretty good looking loaf right there. I'm gonna put them into the boiling stock. We're gonna turn the stock off. We're gonna turn the turn it off because we're not trying to boil in there, remember? We're not trying to boil it. Be very careful, don't spill it on yourself. Leave it cracked, okay? You have yet another hour and a half of cooking. Don't put the top on top of it because you don't want it to boil by accident, okay? Leave the top off so it has a chance to simmer and slow cook, okay? Remember, if you boil this, it's gonna turn to dough, straight dough. It's not gonna have that meat texture because remember, you're dealing with wheat. So be mindful of that. It's the slow cooking and it's the tech and it's the technique that makes it taste so good. All right, we're at the end. Oof. All right. Yep. It's firm. It's got its own texture. firm and got its texture. Now, what we do is we allow these to sit here for the next, well, overnight and let it cool off naturally to stay soaked in the stock. Well, it's the next day and let's just see how our loaves have turned out. They feel really, really dense. So I put a piece of parchment paper right here because what we're going to do now is we're going to set them up so that we can glaze them properly. So we have three very dense rolls. This is the one that was made with the food processor. This one was made by hand. This one was made by hand. And so we're going to do all three of these. But we got to make sure we get our glaze together. So we're going to go with brown sugar, mustard, cloves, molasses, Worcestershire sauce, low liquid smoke, vinegar, black pepper. And we're going to make it into a paste, okay? So that it can make these uh, taste like they have that outer covering, of that sugary outer covering. And we've warmed the uh, oven already. We got it ready so that we can put it in here and get things going. I'm going to take about a third cup of uh, sugar get this going right a brown sugar start off with a third cup of that um, this molasses I'm gonna put a couple of uh, spoons here of this. There we go. A good dash of Worcestershire sauce, just a dash, squirt, some uh, vinegar. Uh, balsamic vinegar. I'm going to add some cloves to this. Rounded up cloves. A little bit of black pepper. The original recipe asked for cayenne pepper. I'm not necessarily with that. Couple of decent squirts of uh, mustard. Something that'll get my glaze going the right in the right direction. You want to take each one of them, and you want to. Score the meat. Okay. 
like a surface cut, you know? And then score it the other way. One way. And then score it the other way. All right, so that's after the first glazing. We're gonna do one more. We're gonna do one more layer of this, and then we're gonna call it a day. We're gonna slide this over this on this one more time. We'll flip it over a little bit though. Glaze that other side. There we go. I'm done with glazing. Now this is why I'm going through all of this because I've got to do some meal planning and prepping here. So I'm going to be able to cut it up in such a way that's going to allow me to do my meal prep to the exact grams of what I'm expected to eat per day. Provided you don't have a gluten intolerance, because we're dealing with gluten now. If you have a gluten intolerance, you can't do this, obviously. Uh, but Satan has the most dense amount of protein you could get without fat, without a whole lot of other stuff. And it's just pure protein for the most part. Um, and when you're trying to build muscle and, and you're working out and all that type of stuff, it's really handy. And, 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 and plus, since I did it at home, I know there's not a tremendous amount of salt in this seitan that I'm eating right now. So I'm investing in my own body, I'm saving money, actually, because it's a lot cheaper to do it this way and eat hearty like I like to eat. Um, you know, and, and then really just make my day a lot smoother. Just all I got to do is pop it out, heat it up, and I'm eating. Mm. Yep, that's looking like glazed meat, all right. We're going to take it and open it up, see what kind of glaze we're looking at. So we'll just take one of the first ones we can just pick up. Pick it like that. Let's see what the texture in the meat looks like here, okay? This is the one where I put the extra, uh, the extra red dye. That looks pretty good, folks. Look at that. Perfect. Edges there, looking good. All right. And last but not least, we're going to do the one that was uh, done with the food processor. See if there was any tremendous difference between those, okay? Okay, we're going to cut it open. No, it's definitely smoother. Yeah, overall, they just really turned out really good. And really dense and compact and very helpful. Everything worked out really good. It smells tremendous. Oh, yeah. It's all flavored with that wonderful sugary, crispy, that sugary coating on each one of them. It's perfect. Now, you know, and I just want to encourage you, you know, to give Satan a try. Um, it doesn't have to be this complicated. There are much simpler recipes out there. I just happen to enjoy this this pig saver version here because it just tastes so good, you know. Uh, but yours doesn't have to be this complicated, all right? Cooking for Brasco, I'm Beast. We're out of here. Brasco and Beast. Fit, fabulous, and frisky.